Welcome everyone to this week's Fish Friday. Today we are on Fish Friday number nine. And today's fish is quite possibly the most popular aquarium fish in the world. You can debate there's one that's actually more popular and I would definitely agree with that. But this fish is still up there in terms of popularity. And the fish that we are talking about today is this the beta fish and for all of these out there that say beta beta is wrong it is a beta bet ta beta fish okay now that we got that cleared out of the way because i had to train my wife for many times to do this this right here is called the beta fish or the beta its scientific name is beta splendens and there's a lot of species of betta fish, but betta splendens is your most common one that you're going to see in um, the aquarium stores, fish trades. Um, it is also known as the Siamese fighting fish. And we'll get into that a little longer, a uh, little farther down. These are a member of the Garami family. Um, so Ospron Ospronimidae. Um, they are anabantoids, meaning that they actually have a labyrinth organ. So they have a specialized organ in their body that acts as almost like a rudimentary lung. So, as you can guess from that, they actually can breathe with both that organ and their gills. They can take oxygen um, into their blood from both sides. Um, these get to about 7.5 centimeters or about 2.8 inches um long so they're not in t they're not very big most of them live about two to three years um that's your normal age however there are people that have been able to keep them well into teenager age so you know 13 14 15 years um their age range is very common but normally you're looking about the two to three years um their preferred water temperature is between 76 and 82 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, not entirely sure what that is in Celsius. I didn't do the conversion. Uh, 27, I believe-ish, around there. I don't know. Um, these are endemic to Thailand, this particular species. The betas, betas, oh my god. Don't make fun of me in comments because I said beta it is still hard for me. It, the betas um they're endemic all over the asian um continent but these particular are endemic to thailand um they live in uh shallow areas in marshes or in rice paddy fields and as most fish that had developed um a way to breathe air along with water these shallow areas normally are very low in um oxygen levels so that's why they developed that ability to breathe the air with that labyrinth organ um something you may not know even though that these are the one of the most popular aquarium fish in the world they are actually iucn vertebral so the um the international committee that determines endangered species these are listed as vulnerable um the primary threats to this fish are actually habitat destruction and pollution um the creation of new agricultural land in asia is you is actually kind of destroying um the habitat that these fish live in now something that we should get into real quick is these are this is a wild type beta um i think it looks better but your veil moon placats and things like that you know the real flowing fins this is the same fish this is what it looks like in the wild in breeding it doesn't look like this nor either breeding or fighting um, here's another one. It's another color morph, but this is also a wild type beta. So, you know, I think the colors look better in the wild types, but the problem with the wild types is most of the time they're going to like this. This is what you're going to normally see in your wild type bettas outside of breeding season. They are actually selectively bred for those colors. And we'll get into that a little more, um, further on down the road what else they were selectively bred for you can probably guess so 
here's another wild type this one is my particular color morph favorite um beta splendens maha Kyensis. i can't really say that um but this is also a wild type um color morph so i think they look better than your really veil moon um uh, or veil fins your half moons all those um fancy fins that you see in the pet stores not saying that they're not pretty but i prefer these wild color morphs um these are actually pretty voracious predators um however they mainly eat plankton and insects in the wild but there's plenty of betta foods out there um, if you're trying to keep these in an aquarium these don't need a lot of room um they do need a little bit though so most of the times you see them in little fish bowls they prefer to be in about two gallon aquariums um that's kind of their preferred size still a small aquarium but if you have plenty of you got to have plenty of plants in there a little place for them to hide they are diurnal meaning that they are awake during the day and they sleep at night so that's why these are so popular in the fish they can actually learn to see who their um, owner is and so they can get excited Oh yes, Tavi. Um, these wild types do survive in the aquarium very easily, just like any of the other bettas. Um, now, some of the one of the most interesting things about this fish, though, is actually their reproduction. Um, not how they do it, but the process of it. So, the males go into a reproductive dance. Um, both the males and females have like a reproductive tan dance. The males, and that's when they are. That's when the they're going to get these colors like this. They're going to flare their gills. They're going to spread their fins. They're going to look all nice and pretty. And then they start twisting their bodies around in a dance. You know, just you know, saying, "Hey, look at me! I'm a good male." Anyway, so they're twisting their bodies in this dance to you know entice females, make them come to me. The females, their bodies actually get much darker and they start developing bars down the side and those are called breeding bars, um, if they're interested. Um, if the female is interested and the male and female decide, hey, this is gonna work, the males actually start to make a bubble nest. As you can see here, it's not the best picture, but they use that labyrinth organ inside their body to take little bits of air and then they coat it in slime and then they make bubbles that stay on top of the water. So they're making a bubble nest. Normally these are right on an edge. Um, in the wild, these would be a, a, around an emergent plant. So a plant coming um, from the bottom, you know, something for it to hook into. And um, after that um, bubble nest is made, the female will help a little bit. They actually go into a nuptial embrace. So the male will twist his body around the female and flip her upside down. And the female will start um, releasing her eggs while the male is fertilizing the eggs. And something about fish eggs is these, or at least particular betta eggs, these eggs actually sink. Um, so after they're done, the male quickly goes and um, starts picking up all the sinking eggs in his mouth and putting them up in the bubble nest um so he's actually going around and physically picking up the eggs and putting them in the bubble nest some betta species actually completely do mouth brooding meaning that the eggs and everything is laid inside his mouth and he takes care of them that way but betta splendens is doing is a bubble nest um guy after they are done the female is actually chased away because the female will actually eat the eggs and the young so the males get out of here because this that girl is going to eat everything um so as soon as they're done so if you're doing this in an aquarium as soon as they're done breeding you have to remove that female from the tank or the male will actually kill her um just how it goes sometimes um, the males will actually care for the nest and the eggs, making sure the eggs are staying in the nest. They repair the nest as needed whenever, you know, something happens and some of those bubble pops. Um, so this is actually one of the instances where the males are taking care of the eggs and the nesting. 
Um, they don't really take care of the fry, at least the bubble nesters don't, but they still stick around and do what they can to protect. <clears throat> now, going back to one of the common names of this fish, the Siamese fighting fish. Um, the reason why you see these heavy finned um, ones in the aquariums and in the pet stores and things like that is they were selectively bred for that. And not only that, they were actually bred for aggression. So when um, this, so it, basically over in Thailand, instead of having rooster fights um, that you know was popular in your South American countries um, earlier in the 1900s, in Thailand they actually had um, fish fights. And what they would do is they'd put two fish in a small deal, and they would let them fight until one of them retreated. This was really popular in the mid-1800s, and in fact, it was so popular that the King of Siam actually regulated and taxed the fish fights. So that is actually why it is called the Siamese fighting fish. So, just a quick rundown. Um, I think the wild types are prettier. They are not quite as aggressive as your um, big finned ones, but you know, they're still pretty aggressive. So, what happens in a... What happens in the aquarium stays in the aquarium. That's right, Junior. Alright, guys. Thank you so much for sticking around for this Fish Friday. I really hope you like it. I really hope you enjoyed it. I know I do. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you do. I would really appreciate it. Please, tell me what you would like um, me to talk about. Give me a fish. And... Who knows? It may happen. Don't forget that we switch freshwater and saltwater every week, so next week will be a saltwater. What it's going to be? Not entirely sure. But thank you guys so much. Take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. And peace.